Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we talked um, earlier about the importance of finding motor points. Motor points are where the motor nerve pierces the fascia into the muscle and it is the most effective place to place your electrodes. But we also discussed that it was useful for picking up AMI, autogenic muscle inhibition, and that's what I want to share with you today. Um, autogenic muscle inhibition can be be a result of the trauma, it can be a result of um, fever or systemic um, problems or as a result of the medication used during, during ventilation. So here's my affected shoulder um, and I've chosen motor point program on my wired complex unit. I start my initial rehabilitation with the wired unit and then at end stage rehab, I might want to incorporate racket sports, um, running, agility drills, catching, throwing balls, etc. Then I will use the Chattanooga Wireless Professional. But for now, we'll use the Chattanooga Physio. So, guys, I want to find the motor point in infraspinatus. So I'm going to place my motor point pen and I'm going to press the intensity up and tell my patients they're going to feel a tingling sensation. And what you can see here, if the camera can zoom in on it, is I've, I've initiated an action potential. If I move that away, it stops. And when I move it over the motor point, you can see evidence of the action potential. Okay, so that is where this patient's motor nerve pierces is infraspinatus. Now, what I'm gonna do now is take this down until that action potential disappears. And it's there. At one, he's got nothing. I'm gonna press this up one. So at two, if the camera can pick that up, that's the minimum intensity required to get an action potential with this patient. Now, bear in mind that neural tissue is one continuous tract, it's one tissue. So we're going to expect that if we get an action potential at two on our complex display here, we're going to expect it to be two on this side. Now, whilst nerves grow where they want to grow, they do grow uniformly. So we should find it in a similar sort of place on this side. So here now I put here on my patient and I take it up and I've got nothing, 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 still going up, still going up, still going up and hey presto, there we go, at 16, 1, 6, if you can see that on the screen, we've elicited an action potential. Guys, this is still a patent nerve, but it's taken us eight times the amount of intensity to elicitate an action potential, okay? So, whilst this, this works, guys, you could be doing your exercise prescription till the cows come home, but unless the signals from the brain get to that muscle, that ain't gonna happen. Okay. You need to incorporate muscle stim with your exercise prescription for it to be effective. So having found that now, we'll just take this ultrasound gel off, which I used just simply for the motor point pen, because when I use my electrodes, they have a water-based gel built in, in order to allow the impulse to pass through this this very resistant material called skin. Now, if I look at the infraspinatus, I've got my scapular spine here, my inferior angle here, if I take teres minor and the lats out, okay, that's pretty much, and I know my motor point is there, okay? But most importantly, what I'm looking for is the physiological action of the muscle, okay? So if I'm working infraspinatus, obviously I'm looking for external or lateral rotation of the arm. So let's see if I've got my pads in the right place. So I choose my program. In this instance, I'm choosing disuse atrophy because this muscle um, hasn't been functioning very well for a while and I want to start to activate it. I 
I press start and the first thing this clever little sensor does, and you can perhaps see evidence of it there, it's scanning this patient's muscle to work out what is the minimum pulse width with a minimum intensity to get that action potential. Because whilst I want to energize the tissue, I want to do it with minimum values. And I've got a tick in the screen to say that's all working now. So I press here and, and we get evidence of a muscle twitch. Guys, this is not a tetanic contraction. This is simply a warm up prior to exercise. Okay. So I'm promoting blood flow into that area and I certainly, this is one of the programs I use immediately post-op for rotator cuff repairs. Because whilst I don't want to get contractions and my, my surgical colleague might not want um, me to put too much stress through his repair, this way I'm not putting any stress through here, but by increasing blood flow to the area, I'm promoting proliferation and migration of new um, and protein synthesis to the repairing tendon. But, and because I'm working through the neural system, I prevent that AMI. Okay, so for the sake of time, I'm going to pause my machine out and fast forward onto a work program. And now I'm going to increase the intensity and what am I expecting to find is external rotation. And I'll just move this out of the way you can see it. And quite plainly you can see that's not external rotation, but it's, it's, um, it's uh, posterior extension. And that's because, and we all know that extension of the arm is due to the posterior fibers of deltoid. So this pad is obviously in the wrong place. So simply now I've paused the machine. Let's move this around. Let's play around with our electrode placement until I get the desired physiological effect, which is external rotation of the arm. I can then incorporate this into my, into my rehabilitation. If my patient has been instructed to keep their arm in a sling, I can still work, work this. I can ask the patient to maintain it there. He's now using subscapularis. I'm getting a co-contraction of my rotator cuff. So for early rehabilitation, this is perfect. And I can control how much tension is being put through that repairing, repairing tendon. I can then take this on to active exercise. So I might ask my patient to internally and externally rotate. While we go into the work phase now, and I can increase the resistance here, a bit like you would with a weight stack or changing the color of your resistance band. I can then take this up and perhaps have a bit more functional position. I can ask the patient to work through it there. And we can see we can get some lovely muscle reaction going through, through that muscle there, okay? And then for end stage rehab, then I'm going to take this off. I'm going to replace it with my wireless pods. And that allows me then to get the patient running around, hitting and catching balls, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that is your rehabilitation. That is looking for AMI. And guys, in my my career I've picked up three axonotmesis using this strategy um, so it's very very important if you get a patient who's the difference between this side and this side is 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 over 25 points it justifies and warrants referring this patient for a nerve conduction test I do hope you find that information useful and um, it's been a pleasure talking to you